Today we're going to talk about the grid heater again, but we're going to talk about it in a different way, and a different way that we can monitor its operation. So if you've got a, whether you've got a, a CTS monitor, or banks, or whoever, even the TARC app is excellent for doing what we're going to look at today. So you don't have to have a lot of equipment to do this. And the nice thing about this is you can see your grid heater operation from inside the truck when you start up. You don't have to worry about getting out and looking at the uh, engine and doing the jiggle test, which I'm not saying you shouldn't do uh, periodically, but I'm just giving us another way to kind of monitor the operation of the grid heater. See how long it's staying on, what the air temperature comes up to, and I think that might be a, a good indication. You know, if it was arcing, I think we'd see some, some change in that air temperature. And if we can develop over a period of time a uh, kind of a standard temperature that the grid heater raises the intake air to, we might be able to learn more about the operation of the, the grid heater and what it's actually supposed to do and if we look at it enough every morning, then we might learn when it's not doing what it's supposed to do. And that would cause us to look at the, do the jiggle test and that would cause us to dig more. But the sensor that controls the grid heater is called the IAT, inlet air temperature. And it's a, it's a very important uh, sensor because it also controls the injection timing on the, on the truck. It uh, controls the grid heater operation, and it feeds its input into the PCM, the powertrain control module. It's a simple little device. It's a, a thermistor, which is a variable uh, resistor. As, the temp as, the, as it gets colder, the resistance goes up. And I got a chart I'll show you. It's from the 5.9, but it's representative of what we're looking at. It's, you know, it's a very simple sensor. All these sensors on this truck are, are simple. And uh, when you look at them in their totality, they're very uh, complicated. And when you break it down into sensor by sensor, it's still complicated. <laughs> no, it's not really that bad, but you know, without all of the specialized equipment that these dealers got, have, it's difficult for the layman, mechanic, you know, do-it-yourself like us to, to try to figure some of this stuff out. But the more we can learn about each sensor and what it does, the better off we're going to be. And the more we can understand what's going on. So we're going to look at our TARC app today and we're going to look at my CTS monitor, which is about to crap out on me. Uh, I, I can't change the, the, the push thing. Is, I, can't, I can't change the PIDs on it. Sometimes I can, sometimes I can't. But anyway, I'm getting ready to probably buy that Banks uh, I-Dash, I think it is. But we're going to look at the uh, IAT. Now, the IAT is an inlet air temperature. A lot of people confuse that with the MAP sensor which is the manifold absolute pressure. But the manifold absolute pressure also reports temperature. It's a two-for-one sensor. It has, it reports uh, absolute pressure to the, to the uh, intake pressure. It's sitting right there on the air horn on the, on the top of the air cleaner. You'll see them whenever you change your air cleaner. There's two sensors there. One's the MAP sensor and the, uh, and the, and the other one's the uh, mass airflow. But the uh, MAP is a, is a two for one. It, it reports pressure and it reports temperature, which is on your TARC app or your whatever it would be known as ambient temperature. And we'll look at that. Your IAT is actually, sometimes it's just referred to as the IAT. Sometimes you'll see inlet air temperature. Sometimes you'll see the MAP sensor also inlet air temperature. In fact, on the wiring diagram, it says inlet air temperature, but it does show it as part of that module, which is the, the MAP sensor. So it's a little bit clearer. But there's, there's two sensors there that, that's involved 
And uh, as far as being uh, air temperature, there's all kind of air temperature sensors on here, or several of them. There's the uh, and pressure, you've got boost pressure, you've got your EGR temperature, which is also coming in too. But the IAT is downstream of all of this. So it's a perfect place to look at the operation of the grid heater, and it's a perfect place to see if something is getting, if, we've ha or if we're having some sort of an anomaly there in the operation of the grid heater. So let's take a look at some of the measurements that I took the other day sitting in the cab, and uh, I'll explain a little bit more about what I'm talking about and how you can look at it yourself if you want to from the cab and I think you know over the over the course of time we may be able to get a kind of a, a trend line of how much that grid heater is heating up the air going into the engine and it also will show us the cycle how long it's cycling because we're going to be watching battery voltage. We're going to watch battery voltage and we're going to watch inlet air temperature right at the engine after everything's been heated, after the EGR has been put in. So it, that's, that's a very important sensor. And as I said, it, it, uh, it controls injection timing. It feeds information back to the power control module. Power control module is like the, the god of the electronics on this truck. Everything goes into it just about and uh, in one way or the other. So let's take a look at this stuff and uh, we'll talk about it, go from there. Hopefully this will be an informative video. I hope you get something out of it. Uh, uh, somebody told me I say uh too much. On my, I think my Maxxis tire video they said Let's take a shot of whiskey every time he says, uh, well, I'm talking to a bunch of alcoholic drunks right now, if that's the case, because I do say uh, a lot. I'm, it, it's difficult to make these videos. This is something I never dreamed in my life I would be doing. I was always a uh, photographer, uh, loved photography, traveled all over the world on my job, and I love to take pictures, but it was always still pictures. I don't know how I got into this video crap, and I'm not good at it. I acknowledge that. But anyway, uh, let's go take a look at it and see how this works. Okay, so we're going to do a cold start here. The truck's been sitting here for about a week now, and uh, we're going to watch the inlet air temperature, the IAT. That's a sensor that's sitting right there on top of the manifold, and, it, and it's a... Uh, it's looking at the inlet air temperature, IAT, inlet air temperature. And uh, we've got the uh, battery voltage right next to it. And that's the two we want to focus on. What we're going to do, I'm on, I'm on accessory right now. So what we're going to do is, is uh, click it on run here. And we're going to see the uh, grid heater come on. And then we're going to uh, start it. And we're going to watch the operation of the uh, grid heater by the battery drawdown, it'll be easy to tell when that grid heater comes on and off. And we'll also watch the temperature and see if the grid heater is affecting the inlet temperature and how it's affecting it. So let's give it a go and see what happens. All right. Okay, there's the grid heater. You can see right there it's on. And I'm looking at it on the dash also. Okay, it's off now. No change in temperature. Let's crank it up. Okay, you see the grid heat is on. Look at the temperature coming up. 68, grid heat is still on. We got 11.9. We'll see when that grid heater goes off. Looks like it's going, there it goes. Nope, still on. 92, 94 degrees. 
that grid heat is putting out. There it, there it went right there. That was a pretty good while. We're going to have to measure th that time and see. But look at that. It went all the way up to 106 degrees, the inlet air temperature. So that was, uh, that was exciting. All right, guys, I think that was a pretty informative little uh, exercise there. Okay, and if you're using torque, you can do the same thing. Right here, I've got ambient air temp temperature and that's read from the uh, map sensor. It reads pressure and sensor. It's a dual sensor. And it's on the right, almost on top of the air cleaner. Now we're, we got uh, volts here, which I'm picking up from the control module. And it looks, it looks like it's the same as the battery voltage. Uh, and then we've got uh, intake air temperature which is the IAT sensor inlet air temperature so we should see these two separate pretty quickly this one should come up this one will probably stay the same but let's see what happens we're gonna do a start I don't know if we'll see a grid heater or not today because the uh, you can see the ambient air te temperature is only what 70 degrees 69.8 or whatever so let's go ahead and do it anyway, though. Okay, we got a little bit of... Yeah, it looked like the grid wanted to go, but it didn't. All right, now we're going to go ahead and start it. Looks like we had a grid for a second there. But now you can see the uh, intake coming up. I notice it's not coming up like it did when we were looking at the uh, intake temperature with the grid heater on. If you recall, the grid heater brought it all the way up to 108 or so. Now today is more or less a cold start because the grid, I, the uh, grid heater won't come on until I think set close to 60 degrees. So it's just too warm to be able to see it. But you can see the difference. It's kind of good really because we can see the difference between the inlet air temperature with and without the grid heater. Now as the engine slowly warms up, of course the intake air temperature will increase on its own. But the little torque app is good in that you can see your, your battery voltage. That's clearly the battery voltage there. I always run about 14.1 when it's everything's normal and charging. We had just a split second of uh, grid you might have saw it pull it down a little bit but not enough to talk about and then the uh, as you can see the intake air is slowly coming up but it's not uh, it, it's it's not cold today at all so and but we did do a cold start as you saw so you can see the inlet air temperature is remaining the same 69.8 and uh, volts 14.1 intake air is 96.8 and the engine's going to hold it there it looks like that's the t that's the temperature it wants it to uh, operate at and that's controlled by the IAT sensor and uh, you know EGR flow and all that good stuff so that works pretty well as far as monitoring the grid heater operation which is our goal and it also gives us an idea of whether that uh, IAT sensor is working or not because that's a really important sensor and it's possible that it can get sooted up 
and you'd want to know it if it did. But I appreciate you guys watching my video. And until next time, adios.